uh, in this section we will discuss uh, the communication between different subnets so we have endpoint 1 and uh, endpoint 2 so in endpoint 1 we have the mac address a and the ip address is 10.1.1 and we have endpoint 2 wherein we have the ip address 20.1.1.1 and mac address is c so now if we uh, see the communication between these two endpoints so the communication is between different subnets right also on endpoint one we have the default gateway address which is 10.1.1.254 which you can see here it is the bd1 subnet that is configured on our leaf switches and on leaf uh, two also if you see that we have bd2 so on leaf two we have the bd2 subnet configured or the default gateway for uh, endpoint two which is 20.1.1.254 so here on uh, endpoint two we have the gateway which is sorry 20.1.1.254 so now when endpoint one is going to communicate with endpoint two so we are considering that a contract is in place between endpoint one and uh, endpoint two so because of that we already discussed about the pervasive entry or the pervasive uh, route in our previous sections so on the leaf one table in the routing information base we will be having an entry for this subnet also right 20.1.1.0/24 and the next hope for this particular entry will be the any cast vtap address for the spine which is this one in our case right dot 100 so now we can write it here dot 100 which is the any cast type address that will be the next stop for this pervasive route now endpoint one is going to communicate with endpoint two now we have the ip address 10.1.1 and default gateway address 10.1.1.254 which is configured on this endpoint so now because uh, endpoint one is going to communicate in different different subnets so it needs the mac address of default gateway so it is going to send the arp for what for the default gateway mac address so now in our previous sections we discussed about arp flooding option right if it is disabled or enabled if you think in this situation because the default gateway is present on leaf itself so the leaf switch does not need to send it across the fabric that is why in this situation the r flooding option does not matter because the leaf itself it can reply to the r packet right which is sent by the endpoints to get the mac address of the default gateway so now endpoint one sends the r packet to get the mac address of default gateway so leaf one because leaf one is the default uh, gateway for this endpoint so we have configured it under the bd subnet so it is going to reply or it is going to send the r reply with the mac address of this bd subnet right so now endpoint one is going to get the mac address of the default gateway let's say the mac address is uh, bb okay so now endpoint one is going to send the icmp traffic right because earlier the icmp traffic was on hold because the endpoint one was not uh, knowing the mac address of the default gateway so icmp process was on hold and arp was into picture so now i endpoint one got the uh, 
MAC address of default gateway. So now it can uh, send the ICMP traffic. So the source IP will be 10.1, right? Destination IP 20.1, source MAC, the MAC address of endpoint 1, that is A. Destination MAC address, it will be the default gateway MAC address, right? So now this packet is going to be received by leaf one. So leaf one is going to populate different uh, information. So first of all, leaf one will find out that endpoint one is going to communicate to which IP. So endpoint one wants to communicate with an IP address 20.1, right? Here. So first of all, which table is going to be checked by leaf one? So the first table that is going to be checked by leaf one is the endpoint table. And also, as we know that uh, when endpoint one sends the ARP request to leaf one, so it is going to learn about the endpoint 10.1 and its MAC address, right? With the help of that ARP request and the same entry it is going to be informed to spine switches using the coop. So the coop database will be updated on spine that uh, this endpoint 10.1 and this MAC address, these, uh, these two are owned by leaf one or it is behind the VTAP address that is dot one or leaf one, right? So now, uh, Leaf one is going to check the endpoint table when it uh, received the ICMP traffic from endpoint one. So in the endpoint table, there is no entry for 20.1, right? So as per the rule, if there is no entry in endpoint table, then the rib is going to be checked. In the rib, we have a route, which is known as the pervasive route, right? And for the pervasive route for this 20 network, the next stop is the spine VTAP address. So in the outer header for the IP address, in the source, it is going to put its own tap address, right? Dot one. And in the destination, it is going to be dot 100, which is the VTAP address of any or the any cast tap address for the spine for the ARP and layer three traffic. In the VXLAN, uh, now this we discussed in our previous sections as well that the VNIT is going to be populated, right? So because it is a uh, layer three traffic, so that is why the VRF VNIT will be populated, right? So seven, eight, nine. Now this particular traffic is going to be received by spine switches. But as we know that in this situation, spine also does not know about the 20.1.1.1 subnet or the, this particular endpoint, right? You can see here the coop database is empty or you can say that it only has the information about endpoint one IP and MAC address, right? So this particular ICMP packet is going to be dropped by spine switches. Now, the same process is going to be repeated that we discussed in our uh, uh, in our previous packet flow when uh, there was communication between uh, same subnet, right? But the R flooding option was enabled, right? Oh, sorry, disabled. So what was the process? It was R clean. Now, spine switch, are going to send ARP glean request to all the connected leaf switches here, here, and here also. Now, the leaf switches are going to check if they have a bridge domain which contains the subnet, this 20 dot subnet, right? So, spine switches are going to send the ARP glean request to find out who is this guy. So now 
once this spine switch is received sorry the leaf switch is received this uh, r glean packet they are going to verify their database if they have if they have the a uh, bridge domain which contains this particular subnet or if they contain a bd subnet in which this uh, particular ip can be available right so leaf one is also has this bd1 subnet right so it is going to send the r request uh no you can see that uh, leaf one it is not going to send any r request because it does not have bd2 subnet so leaf one is going to drop or it is not going to take any action for this r clean packet same goes with leaf three because it is only has bd1 so it is also going to drop now leaf two has bd2 subnet right which is having 20.1.1.254 slash 24 is the bd2 uh, gateway ip address so this 20.1.1.1 for which this spines which is sends the r clean request to find out where is this particular endpoint so it lies in this subnet range right 20.1.1.0 slash 24 so that is why leaf 2 is going to send the r request it's a normal r request using the bd gateway ip or 20.1.1.24 as a source ip for this r request so our uh, endpoint 2 is going to receive this particular uh, r request for which the source is the bd gateway ip and destination is 20.1.1.1 so now with the help of this r request endpoint 2 is going to learn the mac address of gateway right so it is going to learn the uh, mac address of gateway let's say bd2 mac address is cc so it is going to reply with its own MAC address, which is C for this particular R request. So now leaf three or sorry, leaf two is going to populate its endpoint table that 20.1.1.1. It is my endpoint and its MAC address is C. So now same information leaf sorry it's leaf two it's not leaf three i will edit it so it's leaf two so it's the same information that leaf two just received from endpoint two via this r process it is going to report to spines which is using the coop so now coop for spine is also updated for endpoint two so 20.1 and MAC address C, these two lies behind leaf two, and leaf two is having the tap address dot two. This is leaf two, right? So now, when the next ICMP traffic or ICMP packet comes, so leaf one is going to again uh, send this particular traffic to spine, right? using the pervasive entry. So now in this situation, if you see on the spine switch, it is having the entry for this destination IP, right? 20.1.1.1. Now it also knows that which leaf switch owns this particular entry. So now it is going to change this format and in the destination uh, header, it is going to populate the leaf to tap address right which is dot two and now leaf two is going to receive this particular traffic from the spine switches so leaf two needs to populate its endpoint table right and now it needs to decide whether in this particular packet it it is going to save the mac address or the ip address so because in the packet it received from spine switches we have the vrf we need right 
because it's a layer three traffic or layer three communication. So we have the VRF we need here, seven, eight, nine, right? In the packet, that is why it is going to save only the IP address. That is 10.1.1.1. And this 10.1.1.1, it lies behind leaf one, right? So it is going to save this information and now it will remove all the extra information and it will send the packet to endpoint two because endpoint two already knows the gateway uh, MAC address, right? So it is going to send the response. Now in the response, it is the destination IP will be 10.1.1.1. So leaf two is going to check its endpoint table, which is our uh, basic rule, right? First of all, endpoint table will be checked. And then if there is no entry in the endpoint table, then uh, the routing table will be checked. But now in our, in this situation, because uh, leaf two is already having the entry for the destination IP 10.1.1.1. So it can populate directly. Uh, it can modify this information, right? So source IP will be, and uh, sorry, dot two, its own tap address for leaf two. And in the destination, uh, header or the destination type address because it already has the entry. So it is going to populate as dot one. So now it is going to send uh, the traffic, right? So the traffic will be sent to leaf one. So now leaf one also needs to decide if it is going to uh, save the MAC address or the IP address. And because we have the VRF in it, so it is going to save the IP address only that 20.1.1, it lies behind leaf two. And rest of the, it, it is going to remove the extra information and it will send the packet to endpoint one. So this is how the endpoints uh, communicate in different subnet into Cisco ACI.